Hello there. Welcome to another session of Identity in 15. In this session, we are going to talk about using WSO2 Identity Server for Microsoft Azure AD Join and Hybrid Azure AD Join scenarios. I'm Binara Sachin, a software engineer from the IEM team of WSO2. So in this session, I hope to discuss about Azure AD Join as well as how to federate users from the WSO2 Identity Server for the Azure AD Join scenario. Uh, first of all, before going on to the Azure AD join, let's first discuss what is Windows Domain Join. So, Windows Domain Join is a process where a Windows device is added to a network domain. A network domain is a centralized location where user accounts, device configurations and other resources are managed and secured. In other words, this is a server that is responsible for managing the user accounts as well as the device configurations. So this server is called a domain controller in this case and uh, this server uses Microsoft Active Directory to manage policies related to the uh, accounts and devices. Uh, next, the advantages of using domain join now, uh, when it comes to administrators, they can manage devices and accounts as well as security policies from the central uh, uh, domain controller itself. And also, they can in, uh, deploy and install softwares remotely to all the computers uh, joined to their network uh, using this uh, domain control as well. So, uh, when it comes to users, uh, the main advantage would be users can log into their account from any of the devices in their workplace. Uh, and when they log into a new device, all the previous files, configurations and softwares they were working on their previous device will be carried over to this new, de uh, new device as well. Uh, so, uh, although this approach has many advantages, there are many limitations as well. The main limitation is, uh, all those devices needs to be connected to the company internal network for this to work. So, any of users personal devices or uh, devices that has not been connected to the internal network cannot access any of those resources uh, and uh, since the last pandemic when the user uh, many of us were uh, started work from home uh, this domain join scenario uh, had many uh, issues so uh, Microsoft solution for that uh, that issue is uh, actually Azure AD join so Azure AD join is the Microsoft Cloud solution for the domain join and it has the same advantages of the previous but without the need of expli uh, explicitly connecting into the internal network of the system. So uh, since this is a cloud infrastructure, admins are able to remotely enroll, manage, configure devices and do all those configurations from the Azure admin portal itself and uh, uh, they can use MDM applications such as Microsoft Intune for this as well. Uh, but uh, one uh, thing to notice is even in this scenario the user details are still stored in a local Active Directory or local server in the uh, workplace itself. And Azure AD works as a middleman between this local Active Directory and the end user devices. So uh, and another point to uh, notice is uh, when it comes to Azure AD join and hybrid Azure AD join, the main difference is uh, even though the user accounts are stored uh, in the local Active, uh, Active Directory in both scenarios, the device details are stored in uh, separate uh, separate uh, places. So in Azure uh, AD join scenario, the device details will be stored in the Azure Active Directory, but in the hybrid Azure AD join scenario, the device details will also be stored in the local Active Directory itself. So depending on the company's requirements and policies, they can either uh, go with the Azure AD join scenario or the hybrid Azure AD join scenario. So this diagram uh, describes uh, describe the high level connectivity between the uh, entities available in the Azure AD join. So as you can see, the end user devices are only connected to the Azure Active Directory. 
and Azure Active Directory connect, uh, maintains a separate connection between the on-premise Active Directory and itself. Uh, so when, when a user is trying to log in, uh, that user's login request will first come to the Azure Active Directory and Azure Active Directory will communicate with the on-premise Active Directory and validate uh, the user's authenticity and the users will be able to log in. Uh, but when it comes to the uh, hybrid Azure AD join scenario, uh, there's a separate connection between the on-premise Active Directory and the end-user devices. That way, that on-premise Active Directory will, will be able to enforce uh, some device policies where the, uh, without going through the Azure Active Directory as well. But it also comes with a separate uh, requirement where the end-user devices needs uh, need to also connect uh, connect to the uh, on-premise Active Directory uh, as well as the Azure Active Directory. So, uh, organized need, needs to consider uh, what are their priorities and what are their requirements and uh, choose between uh, Azure AD Join on and Hybrid Azure AD Join if they want, want to use this cloud solution. Uh, so, uh, next, uh, when it comes to federate users from WSO to IES for the Azure AD join scenario, the main advantage is uh, if an organization already has ex uh, existing user base in WSO to IT server, then they are uh, able to implement uh, that user base itself and enable them to uh, use the uh, solutions in the Azure AD join scenario. And also another uh, advantage would be uh, the authentication process uh, will happen in the WSO to identity server. Therefore, uh, we are able to implement advanced authentication processes such as multi-factor authentication and adaptive authentication uh, scenarios in the Azure AD join and hybrid Azure AD, uh, AD join scenarios. And the protocols used for the federation and uh, WS federation and uh, as well as we also use the WS trust protocol uh, for the login process. Uh, next, this is the uh, simple connection diagram bit, uh, diagram when uh, WSO to identity server uh, is also uh, connect, uh, connected to the system. So here WSO to identity server works as a middleman between the on-premise active directory and the Azure active directory. And uh, as you can see the uh, similar to the previous scenarios, end user devices will only be connected to the Azure Active Directory and uh, when Azure Active Directory uh, tries to communicate with the Active Directory, uh, it, uh, the connection will go through the uh, WSO2 identity server and we uh, will be able to implement the authentication scenarios available in uh, WSO2 identity server uh, when users are trying to log in. Uh, next, I will be going through the configurations required to uh, implement the, uh, this scenario. Uh, first of all, these are the requirements that uh, that organization needs to have uh, in order to implement uh, uh, WS2IS Federation uh, with uh, Azure Active Directory Domain join, uh, join Services. So first of all, they need to have a Office 365 business account and they need to have a separate domain name uh, that should be uh, that we uh, should be connected to this uh, office 365 uh, account uh, we will discuss that later and uh, that uh, organization also needs to have a windows platform where windows azure active directory powershell uh, components are installed as well as they need to have a uh, microsoft active directory and all, uh, of course, you need to have a WSO2 identity server instance as well. Uh, so next, uh, this is the uh, basic uh, main step uh, steps uh, when uh, we are configuring. So first of all, we need to configure uh, Azure Active Directory uh, to federate the users in a uh, certain domain to WSO2 identity server. And uh, there are several configurations related to service provider and identity provider configurations in WS2 identity server as well. And uh, by third, we need to uh, set up uh, use account syncing between the on-premise Active Directory and 
and the uh, Azure Active Directory. So first of all, let's talk about uh, how to configure Azure uh, the configuration on uh, configurations on the Azure Active Directory do, uh, uh, domain side. Uh, so first of all, uh, since I have mentioned that you need to have separate domain, uh, we need to add that domain. Uh, uh, to the Azure AD using Microsoft uh, 365 Admin Center. So the process is very uh, simple and uh, I will attach a documentation from Microsoft itself uh, in this video's uh, description uh, if you need any uh, help uh, adding the domain to the Azure AD. So since the uh, this configuration process is a bit long, uh, I will provide the documentation and uh, provide you with the high level steps and uh, when uh, implementing you can follow those documentations and implement the uh, these steps step by uh, step by step so next uh, we need to configure uh, that domain uh, the, uh, we need to configure the users in that domain to federate uh, to the uh, ws identity server in other words uh, if a user in that domain tries to log in we need to configure uh, Azure Active Directory uh, to uh, redirect those uh, login requests to WS2 Identity Server. So uh, for that, we have existing documentation and I will also uh, uh, put the documentation in the uh, description. Uh, but one thing to change is uh, for the metadata exchange uh, URL uh, configuration, instead of the services slash mixut endpoint we need to put mixut slash mix slash get endpoint in order to uh, Azure AD join scenario to work but uh, uh, there's a uh, issue here uh, regarding some of the versions in ws 2 is so some versions uh, does not uh, contain this endpoint uh, so we can first uh, uh, perform a simple curl request and check whether or not this endpoint uh, exists and if it exists uh, we can simply put this configuration uh, when configuring uh, Azure AD uh, domain federation settings uh, but uh, if that endpoint does not exist uh, we can uh, post the uh, custom X endpoint for this Azure AD join scenario, for that I have uh, put the custom mix endpoint files in a separate repository and uh, I have attached the repository with the instructions as well. So if we go with that approach, uh, we will uh, put the mix endpoint URL as mix ut slash custom mix. So either way, uh, we can follow the uh, this documentation. Uh, so this documentation uh, gives the instructions on how to configure w, uh, WS2 ID, uh, identity server and Azure Active Directory uh, to federate users uh, from Azure, uh, WS2 identity server. Uh, so uh, you can follow this documentation and uh, for the, uh, uh, the only change we need to do is uh, when we are configuring the mix, uh, mix endpoint. Next, uh, uh, we will go through the uh, WS2 identity server configurations as well. So when it comes to WS2 identity server configurations, uh, these uh, four configurations need to uh, be put in place. Uh, first one is uh, we need to configure the active directory as the primary user store in the WS2 IS. And next, we need to configure uh, to use the email address as the username when users are trying to log in. And uh, for, uh, third and fourth points, we need to configure uh, Office 365 to federate users using WS Federation as well, uh, well as WS Trust. So all those four points, uh, for all those four points, we have official documentation in the WS2 identity server and I will uh, attach those uh, documentations to the uh, video description and you can follow those documentations and there are no other changes uh, between 
the documentation itself and the how how the configuration should be done uh, here a unique configuration needs to be done regarding the security policies so uh, we need to change the sts policy configurations in the uh, man, uh, from the management console uh, registry and here uh, we need to go to this path and uh, change and uh, replace the existing uh, uh, policy with the following text so i will also attach the uh, uh, this new policy in the description as well so you can just copy this poli uh, policy and put that in the uh, registry uh, in this path uh, so finally uh, we need to set up a method for the use accounts to sync between the uh, on-premise active directory and the Azure active directory uh, so uh, first of all uh, the reason we need to do this is uh, even though the uh, passwords and the authentication process happens in the uh, WSO2 identity server and the Azure uh, sorry WSO2 identity server and the on-premise active directory itself uh, Azure AD uh, needs to have a, uh, a dummy set of users uh, for this scenario to work or rather the uh, Azure AD needs to have a basic uh, list of users that are available in the Active Directory itself in order for user, uh, users to be able to log in using uh, WS Trust or WS Federation protocols. So for that uh, we can either uh, manually uh, think those users one by one using PowerShell commands or we can automate the process as well there, uh, there are official synchronization tools like Azure AD Connect uh, from Microsoft and we can uh, use those tools to uh, think of existing users uh, with the Azure Active Directory uh, similar to previous scenarios I will also put the and documentation for these uh, these in the uh, description as well so with that we uh, uh, we will be able to configure the system to, uh, system to work we uh, are uh, uh, wso2 server users will be federated to azure active directory uh, domain joint services uh, so uh, for the demonstration i will be demonstrating how to join a device uh, where the device user is federated uh, via the uh, WSO2 identity server so uh, here I have a uh, installation scenario so when uh, when we are installing windows we get an option to uh, set up uh, windows uh, either for personal use or, or for an organization so in this case uh, we need to go with the organization uh, setting up with for an organization ap approach here we uh, we need to enter the email of the user so uh, here the uh, uh, my email would be binara at binarasachin.me here the binarasachin.me is the custom federated uh, domain name i have configured in the azure ad so since the uh, binarasachin.me domain is federated to ws2 identity server it will next uh, redirect uh, redirect to the login page of the identity server itself So here we can see the default authentication endpoint of the WS2 identity server uh, and we can just uh, use the email and password uh, for the user to login.
So after the installation is done, uh, when the user is logged in, uh, we can go to the PowerShell and execute this following command dsregcmd slash status and it will show whether or not the device is domain join or not. So in the device state, uh, you should be able to see that uh, the Azure AD join state is set as yes and as well as in the tenant details, we can see that the tenant name has published too. It means that the device has been successfully uh, joined to the uh, WSO2 tenant domain and uh, we will be able to manage these device policies uh, from the Azure AD itself. So that's all for this uh, today's session. Uh, thank you for uh, listening and if you have any questions related to this, you can put that in the comment section and uh, we, uh, we are happy to answer those questions. So thank you very much.